That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. A recruiter from NASA came to my campus and talked about, you know, come work for us in the space program and and we've got, you know, all these German scientists and Werner von Braun and of course, you know, because I was a kid not too many years before and saw Werner von Braun on Wide World of Disney, I said, I know who this man is and I, yeah, I'm interested. There were many people across NASA with uh, skills and capability and expertise. It was a young crowd. But we also had uh, the Von Braun team here of some 200 expert, experts in rocketry that had proven engineering development techniques. Well, I was uh, an electrical engineer, so simulation work is where you, you write programs that's, that predict how well real systems will, will work. And that was what they employed me to do. And I worked for the group that was working on the control system for Saturn as it was lifting off. Well, I'm an electronics man. I was responsible for the electronics on the Apollo program, the space shuttle program, the uh, Hubble telescope and things like that. My career spanned 50 plus years, so I was an early, early uh, member of the uh, Von Braun team. I came here in 1956. Well, uh, we started, when we first started out, we were working uh, about 10 hours every day. We were trying to supposedly catch up with the Russians and we worked really hard. We didn't know a lot about what we were doing, but uh, uh, once we caught up with the Russians, it slowed down a little bit. They were 10 hour a day weeks during the week. Weekdays was 10 hours every day, and Saturdays was eight hour days. So we worked 58 hours a week on a crash, on a crash program. A lot of times when we were designing electronics, we would uh, get a circuit or something working fine and uh, we would shut off the power for the night and come in the next morning and turn it on and it wasn't working. Calculations were done with desktop calculators. They were just a keyboard, you just punch your numbers in and pull a pull a lever to either add, subtract, multiply, or divide. We used computers back then that were not anything like today. I, your cell phone has far more computing power than just about all the computers we had at the center. It's hard to believe, uh, you know, how, how really poor our computers were back then. And we uh, wondered at the time whether this uh, possibility of space travel was uh, feasible because how in the world uh, are we going to make sure that the uh, guidance system doesn't uh, quit and nothing to start it. It was not like it is, it's too easy today. Werner von Braun was a very uh, easy man to talk with. He would come down and asked to be shown how the thing works. He was very interested in details and yet he could talk about stuff that I had no idea about that they were thinking about. So he was a, he was a very uh, humble man, I would say, and uh, a person with a big picture, but interested in details and made you feel good. So when we completed our presentation to Dr. Von Braun, I was prepared to get questions I couldn't answer. But his only question was, well, how much does this system weigh? So I told him what our guesses were. And you know, he wasn't, he wasn't probing 
to see if we knew our business. He was trying to figure out what launch vehicle he wanted to put this on. So if he could figure out some launch vehicle he had, he could put this on, particular one that he built, he would be interested in flying this. So it was not a grilling. He was figuring out how to help us. And that was, that was his nature. And he uh, was talking to our lab director, uh, Dr. Walter Hauserman, and uh, he just said, well, I'd like to go see where this study is being done. You know, and I wasn't really expecting to present. You know, nobody was. So we went this mad rush of picking up coffee and cleaning the, the coffee rings off the desk and straightening up. And he came down about 15 minutes later and very, very personable. He, you know, he greeted everybody. And uh, I have to admit that he asked me better technical questions than I think some of my managers could have. He could uh, discuss pretty near any subject with any, any uh, person of expertise long enough to get out of that discussion what he wanted to get out of that discussion. And he was excellent at, at chairing a conference of engineers with varying expertise and varying opinions to drive a difficult problem to a decision. I stated uh, in the lab, we saw it, but uh, the watch party was in 4400, which was the uh, headquarters of NASA there, and the Marshall Space Flight Center, and that's where the watch party was. Uh, I went with a bunch of uh, people, young, young adults from my church. We went to Gunnersville and camped out out there. And I brought my little Sony 9-inch portable TV that I could plug into my cigarette lighter. And when the big moment came for Neil Armstrong to jump off, it was nighttime here, of course. And there must have been 100 people gathered around my little TV looking at it. And I mean, it was, it was quite a, a, a scene. It was my good fortune to travel to Kennedy Space Center Florida for the Apollo 11 launch. So we had a fly-by-wire system on that lunar lander. It's supposed to, he was, Armstrong's supposed to just grab the joystick and drive it on in there, you know? And he couldn't find a level landing space. So he kept flying sideways till he found one. He almost ran out of fuel before he did. But when he set her down there and then jumped off that lunar, lunar landing gear leg, with his quip about uh, one small step for man, you know, it's a sigh of relief. It was a sigh of relief that all systems worked. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff well, I would say it was a very uh, informal, enjoy, a lot of fun. Is what I always wanted to do as an engineer. We worked with everything. They gave us the tools. And you just put your shoulder to the wheel and you, uh, you got your work done because you knew other people were depending on it. They gave us the project and said, it's got to be ready in 18 months. And you may not think that that's fast, but for the government, uh, everybody said, we'll never make that. But we did, and we, they flew in 18 months. You know, I think because we were in an international competition, you know, at the time, you know, that was, I think, a big thing that we were thinking about. You know, well, we, we beat the Russians, you know. And, but, you know, in years since, I think about it in terms of, you know, uh, how, you know, how a thousand years from now, 
people will say, well, okay, there was Christopher Columbus, there was this, there was the lunar landing. And to have even had a small part in that, in, and even though you're anonymous as far as history is concerned, just to know that you were part of that, I mean, it's kind of a neat, neat feeling.